Good morning, you're welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. My name is Rome Paulson. And I am Nyamdul Agadi. Glad to be here with you once again. Mm -hmm. It's Tuesday the 20th of August 2024. Um, we're going to be discussing several things this morning, one of which IG succession battle. Tension rises as Egberto Kun's fate hangs on Tinubu's de decision. Another is presidential jets at Biodun Consult's federal government as Utomi tackles a muscle. We'll also be taking the global stories that made it to the front pages of our national dailies, as well as some top trending stories. But first, let's check out our quote of the day. Science and technology revolutionize our lives, but memory, tradition, and myth frame our response. And that is by author Schlesinger. He's an historian and he says this morning, science and technology revolutionize our lives, but memory, tradition, and myth frame our response. Mm. Mm. The wisdom in your hands is not as much as the wisdom in your heart. Mm. And the wisdom in your heart comes with... Uh, is this another quote? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, that's that's how I, it just came to me yeah. when I was reading that. Mm -hmm. You know, what molds you is the upbringing that you're given. The upbringing does not come from technology. It doesn't mm -hmm. come from the phone you're using or, or the cars you're entering or anything. It comes from what is handed down to you by your parents, yeah. by your peers, by the people who are around you. Mm -hmm. That is where you get... Um, what forms your your real being mm -hmm. your character and all that and that is what helps you to respond to how the new technology is trying to revolutionize your life yeah. whatever it, it throws at you the response towards it comes from how you have been brought up mm -hmm. so were you brought up well to be able to respond to whatever innovation has come to play yeah and if you think about it technology today was created right mm -hmm. so it's created from people it's created from the things that you know. It is created from those myths, those traditions, those things that have framed your entire being. The core of who you are is what you actually put back into technology. Now, it does revolutionize our lives because it kind of makes things easier. So things that will probably take days and months to do, now you can do it with technology and it takes minutes. So it makes everything that everything that you know, you put it into technology and it gives it back to you and it makes it even better. But I think it is important that you do not just hang on technology and wait for it and say, okay, you know what? I'm not going to do anything because technology is going to do it for me. Now we have AI and most people will tell you, oh, I'll write my dissertation with AI. I don't have to do anything. But guess what? Is in doing those things that actually frames you is in those traditions, those things that you've been used to or that you've been trained with, that's what frames who you are as a person. So do not just rely on technology. It will revolutionize your life, all right, but it's good to still have the core of who you are. I might also want to add that um, making things easier doesn't necessarily mean that it's making your life a lot better, better. because technology made killing a human being easier, for instance, but it doesn't mean that it, mm -hmm. it made it, it better. Technology makes everything good or bad bet, um, easier, on you. easier mm -hmm. but maybe not necessarily better. So mm -hmm. what make, forms you, like we've always said, is uh, uh, what goes on around you mm -hmm. from the physical things that you mm -hmm. have, the people around you, and the experiences you have had. So do not jettison that because you have technology. That's, that's the bottom line of this. Yeah. Technology is good, but it's not the ultimate. The exactly. ultimate is the people and the tradition and what molds you into yeah. the character that you have become. 
All right, very well said. Let's move over to our top training stories this morning. This first one says, Naira creates sale to Dangote, others begin October 1. The federal government will begin selling crude in oil, well, crude oil in Naira to Dangote Refinery and other local refineries starting October 1, 2024. This initiative aims to stabilize the pump price of refined fuel and the dollar Naira exchange rate. The first PMS delivery from Dangote Refinery is expected next month, with significant production increases from Port Harcourt and Dangote Refineries expected by November 2024. The Finance Minister has directed the finalization of details for implementation, with a report to be prepared for the President by September. Mm. Dangote Refinery, Port Harcourt Refinery. So I know Port Harcourt Refinery was supposed to start operations <laughs> in August, right? And it has been moved again. It's been moved so many times. We've been talking about this since last year. I'm sorry, I don't believe it. Because I've seen it get moved so many times. So how are we sure that October 1 is going to come and yes, we'll have it. And I was just complaining to you, you know, before we came on air. And I was saying how the queues are so long. Pump price of fuel right now is expensive. In fact, there's no, there's no one price. Every gas station, every filling station is selling at whatever price that they want to sell. I currently, the one I have in my car right now, I bought it at 860 in the past from this same gas station. That's in Lagos. That's in Lagos, in Lagos here, of which Lagos is supposed to be ch the cheapest. And this same gas station was selling for like 615 just about two weeks ago and now they're selling for 860 so i can only imagine what other states who you know have their own pump price a little bit higher what they will be selling and you were just saying that yeah, in calabar, yeah, in calabar it was the, the cheapest the cheapest filling station was selling at uh, 950 yes, imagine at yesterday so i don't know what the price is right now mm. but it's crazy yeah and if a filling station no matter what kind of filling station is it it is it's selling at 950 you can imagine what the black marketers are doing exactly and a lot of people that commute are not in the urban center they mm. are somewhere else as they are selling 950 in calabar at least there is a hundred naira difference in Ogoja of mm. the same cross the state. So you can imagine what people are feeling right now. Yeah. And it's a very terrible thing. So some, I was speaking to someone last night because it was a big issue for me <laughs> yesterday. And over the weekend, I really struggled to get fuel because there are so many long queues that sometimes you're like, why am I wasting my time here? And someone was telling me that his friend was even trying to get in a jerry can and she couldn't. And she's like, how about people who still use petrol generators? Like, you would not give us 24 hours of power even 20 hours my of friend power. was was on the, and you still was not side of the to road me. and the filling station was on the other side he he ran out of fuel oh my goodness and you cannot pass you cannot cross the place you will have to go and cross is very very far mm -hmm. so he now took a jerry can as well yeah. went to the filling station and they said they were not going to sell yeah, so, they're not selling so he had to get boys to push the car oh my goodness to a very this is like two kilometers before you can turn back to that filling station the only one that was selling fuel at that time oh my before goodness. he could come and buy but at the time he got there the queue that he met so he was just going he spent the f entire day yeah trying to get fuel and I, I checked on saturday i checked about three filling station that i know would always have fuel and they were not selling the thing is i i don't even know why it's it's such a like is dividends of democracy it's um it's a political gain like uh, we are doing so well to mm. sell fuel at 100 naira to refineries in nigeria mm. it, it shouldn't even make news mm. because this is something that should just happen you're not supposed to even give a timeline uh, after after three months we're going to start selling in naira that is our currency yeah are you are you supposed to sell in naira in the first place in the first place so whatever you're, you're trying to do whatever you're trying to show us that you are you're really trying this government is really trying it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense to me a refinery owned by the federal government you need to set a timeline before you begin to sell in naira which is our legal tender or a refinery owned by an individual from Nigeria yeah. you're selling in Naira and you're telling us that it's a, it's a good thing you're trying for the people. It doesn't make sense. I just, my own, is <laughs> the one that really concerns me is we need this product because a lot of people are struggling to get their hands on this and some businesses are hinged on this. Like they can only thrive when they have electricity because they use it as an alternate um, you know, source of power. So we need this product. Please sell it to Dangote. Please sell it to Port Harcourt Refinery, whoever you want to sell it to let's refine our own products and make sure that it is available and then the price of of this particular goods is quite expensive 
why can't we reduce the price? What are we doing about it? Because if you think about it, everything that is really happening now, inflation, is stemmed from this same price. See, they, they should also tell us when, when they, they, they begin to sell this thing and the production is being done, what are we hoping to get, you know? as the price of fuel because someone was saying the experts are saying that when dangote begins to sell it's going to be by like 600 or six something mm. so what mark difference will that make, make really so if we are refining the, the products here and it's still as costly as when we're not refinery the refining here mm. then it doesn't make any sense because it should be cheaper you're you're saving a lot so the importation fees and all of that Okay. Anyways, another top trending story this morning says MTN others get permits to generate electricity. The Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission, NERC, issued permits to Golden Penny Power Limited, um, MTN Communications and others for mini-grid electricity generation in the first quarter of 2024. Golden Penny Power Limited received a license for six off-grid gas plants with a total capacity of 100 megawatts, while MTN was permitted to build four captive generation plants in Lagos with a capacity of 15.94 megawatts. NERC also granted nine captive power generation permits with a total capacity of 52.57 megawatts and issued three mini-grid permits and two registration certificates. Additionally, NERC certified six meter service providers and issued 36 new orders, including regulations and tariff orders for the distribution and transmission companies. So how will that affect us? So if MTN, for instance, generates power... Um, golden so, Penny. Yeah, and Golden Penny and all that. So they will use it in their plants and will it reduce the cost of whatever they're going to, they're giving us, the services they're giving mm. to us? Will MTN now, for instance, charges less on their tariff because they they're have not the, paying as much yes yeah, so if that is going to be the case then we should rejoice but mm. if that is not going to be the case they're just doing something to eat their business and uh, life goes on mm -hmm. the same way then i don't know why we should even rejoice i don't know why uh, people have to 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 queue to get these permits to even generate electricity for if the themselves. federal government is saying it's so difficult because mm -hmm. someone said for one kilowatt of electricity that's the minister he said for that to be generated it costs 120 naira so if it is costing so much that you have to uh, pe put people into groups now the caste system has come into nigeria where you are in band a or band b mm -hmm. or band c and you're finding it difficult why not just open it and say okay if you have to if do this can. come here and then uh, let's see the dues that you're going to be paying to us as a government mm. and let that thing be the, the private so thing. the thing is i feel like this is still corruption because it just doesn't work that way for instance if you have if you you know build your house and you decide to have your own transformer you have to pay a lot of money for that transformer yeah. like you buy the, your own transformer you still have to pay to the government to allow you install and i'm like i'm even helping you yeah. You're not bringing, I'm not asking you to buy I'm me a transformer. You a time You're not giving after nothing. After this time, we will start collecting because you shall have used your money from day one. No, even the transformer is for me. Like, it's just for my house. Yes, I know. Instead of me being connected to the general one, this is for me. So I'm helping you if you think about it. But I still have to pay. I, th I think as of before 2020, I heard it was about $4 million to pay for that. And I'm like, for me to even bring my own power. If, even a so, community comes together, donate money, buy a transformer, which should be provided by the power yes. of the company. And then you still pay. You still pay so for it. So they will not even give you like six months after that, you can start paying your NEPA bill because... Uh, no, uh, what I'm even talking have, about is you, you have to pay for it. You have to pay to install it. Yes, that's but for your that NEPA is, bill, that's, that's, that's their standard. responsibility, mm -hmm. but you are now the one yeah, paying for yes, it. You're the and one paying for it. paying for everything. Because just, they, could have, they could have just said, because we didn't provide it, mm -hmm. take Let's even take off. a rebate, yeah. yeah. But they don't, don't say that. They, just they tell them. you to pay, pay a huge amount to install it and still pay so your regular bill. I was asking myself, bill. if 120 to provide one kilowatt of uh, electricity, why are you not exploring the solar system mm -hmm. and the solar energy and all that, those things, if it is cheaper, and then do it for Nigerians? Mm -hmm. Why must you do the hydroelectric power when you know that it's cost uh, intensive and you mm -hmm. cannot you cannot uh, carry the cost, you mm -hmm. cannot bear the, the burden like that? Why are you not even diversifying? Why are you not privatizing? Why are you not doing Honestly, all these things? I, I'm even wondering why we're still thinking about this because, you know, there was a guest yesterday and he was saying other countries are thinking of 
things that you're doing, technology, they're thinking of AI, people are going to the space, they're going to the moon. And in Nigeria, we're still dealing with hunger. We're still, we're still dealing with electricity. We're still dealing with roads, like the basic things that you should be having. Because really, why are we not thinking of solar? If solar is going to be cheaper, why, why are you not thinking progressively to say, okay, what can we do better? Why are we not bringing transformational ideas to Nigeria? We're still dealing on the basic, the old obsolete. I was, I was discussing this with somebody in the corridors of power and he just laughed and said do you know the people who are the most um, uh, importers of generators mm. big generators small generators and all that people who really own this company that do that so they are at the corridors of, of, of power as mm. well and they will frustrate it so anything that you think is not working and should work in Nigeria because of is their own business by somebody who thinks that it is going to remove food from their table from their mouths <laughs> and there was a time they look for some, there was another a, time job. A, few, a few years ago where somebody in the National Assembly said that we shouldn't be talking about electric cars because we have fuel in Nigeria. So other countries can talk about it, but we, we need this fuel to sell this fuel to make sure to so, make money. So you so want, to, talk you want to make my life miserable just because you want to make money on National it. Assembly. So <laughs> Anyways, to, um, to let's see what happens with MTN. Like you said, if if um, it's going to be impactful for every other person, maybe, then that should maybe work. Maybe Flower uh, Golden Penny will ha give us l cheaper noodles, <laughs> cheaper <laughs> spaghetti, we'll and see. all those kind of things. So anybody who is generating it, let's see the impact on the Yeah, people. let's see the so impact. Cool. All right, our final top trending story says, ASU gives federal government 21-day strike notice. The academic staff of union of the universities, ASU, has issued a 21-day strike notice to the federal government over non-implementation of previous agreements. The notice was issued after a National Executive Council NEC meeting at the University of Ibadan and will be sent to the federal ministries of labor and education. ASU's demands include the implementation of the 2009 renegotiated agreements, payment of accumulated academic um, allowances, and the provision of revitalization funds to upgrade universities. The union also expressed concerns about the proliferation of universities without adequate funding and warned of an impending strike if their demands are not met. 2009. 2019 made 10 years. Mm -hmm. 2000, 15. Uh, you see. So 15 years. years right now. It's even embarrassing. Into an agreement and you're still not fulfilling it. And some people will, will now argue that eh, we've talked about minimum wage. The, it, it goes beyond that. I'm sure inside the agreement there were things like um, funding for universities, mm -hmm. more infrastructure in yeah. universities and all that. Funding research and development. Yes. And then you, you say you've, you've given, no matter what you do, as far as an agreement has not been reached or as agreement has been reached mm -hmm. and it's not been fulfilled, you're not doing what you're supposed to mm -hmm. do. I was listening to a, a radio program the other day and someone was asking, if, if, if you are owing me, if I'm owing you uh, 10,000 Naira and you invite me for an event and I come and spray you 20,000 Naira, do you still expect me to pay? Because I've sprayed you more than the one I'm owing you. And I was like, that's rubbish. If you're owing <laughs> you me could 10, have 000, saved your 10,000. Pay me the 10,000 and then go spray and spray whatever, whatever you whatever want. You, want. Yeah. you don't want to, no problem, but you pay what you're, you're owing. Because it's just like you want to marry a woman because you have been buying drinks for that man in a, in a beer parlor all the time. You know, <laughs> give me your daughter for free. You see, give me your daughter. Apple have been giving you wine, which has amounted to more than the one you require for your agreement. It's agreement. Yeah. Just do what you're supposed to do. Even if you've done something better, mm -hmm. but if you entered into an, an agreement, you should fulfill it. Fulfill it. Mm. Or renegotiate and say, this thing I'm going to do, I'm doing it in lieu of that agreement. Yeah. You don't do that then. Yeah. You have failed. It's as simple as that. And it's quite unfortunate because education is so important in our nation. And we're playing with it. We're not playing. The people who want to remain in power take their children out. They go and learn in the best schools and then come back and load it all about the people who have no opportunity to go to school. They know that it's important. That's why all their children are outside. Outside, right. See, so if they're learning, they're coming back. They're not, they're not going to be uh, senators and everything in the UK. They're coming back to Nigeria. 
and then they say, ah, this one is a young business. person, mm. this one is a UK person. And then we start to prioritize yeah. them you over went, the... You went to university in Toronto, you went to university in uh, one republic that we do not know about, so long as it's outside the country, mm. fine. And then you load it over us. So they know it's important, they just don't want us to get it. And that's what we are finding in the North, for instance. Mm. They know that education is important, but they are letting the Almatyris to continue to, to fly in, in, so, in the streets and yeah, beg. Because they're using them for the political gains. Imagine they are all politically aware, I'm quoting that, mm. because uh, they will go out to vote, they have their transistor radios, they talk to them like that. They're mm. they are very, very uh, aware when it comes to political matters. So a seven-year-old knows what his duties are, and he goes to the polling unit to vote at seven, when he has <laughs> not reached 18. Yeah. So they use them like that, and mm. they're allowing that. I think, it, in a way, it's just to subdue the people, it's to suppress yes. you. So they know that if you are empowered, then you, you have a mind of your own, you want to do your own thing. But but how can we subdue you to ensure that you do our own bidding? And that's just what it is. So if we are, you're not ed educated, if you're not going to schools, they, they, they know that they can still use you. So they kind of frustrate, you know, the efforts of the universities to ensure that their own agenda is still Education fight. generally, but they frustrate education generally. And someone once said, uh, I cannot quote directly, but he said, if you're educated, you, you, you become... Uh, almost impossible to be enslaved. Yes. Uh -huh. So that is what it is. So mm. they know this and they're they are keeping us back because no, no nation, nations are not judged according to how much uh, people they have mm -hmm. or even according As to how much the money they have. Of but the, the citizens. quality of the citizens, the yeah. quality of their educational system. Mm. So if you go to Japan, what do they have? What natural resources do they have? You go to Korea and all that, what natural resources do they have? Most of these countries exist because of technology. Yes. This technology that they are importing and mm -hmm. they are richer than us. But yeah, we I have do. everything and a, a docile people that will just follow. You come during Christmas and give us a... a <laughs> uh, Even 5,000. And all bitters. I think we have Gongo... Go, go, now, oh, go. Bitters, <laughs> even right now. Everything has bitters. That's what you bring to But us. I think they should definitely have a conversation, renegotiate if, that is, if that's what they want to do. And because we cannot have our kids being sent out of school because of strike. Every other year, you, you, you're hearing strike. Renegotiate. Re because that one is a renegotiation in oh, 2009. Now they will re renegotiate. 15 years later. They will re renegotiate. It's quite, it's quite sad. Anyways, we'll go on a short break now. We look at the weather. When we return, we'll be reviewing the papers. Please stay with us.